Salvation Broadcast, Hope Evangelistic Church, Brother Paul here. Amen. Uh, we're in the end of our uh, fall Bible study. We're coming to the end. Uh, Tuesday will be the last lesson. Uh, Thursday is our normal day, but Thanksgiving is, is on Thursday, so we're going to have our last lesson, Lesson 10, on, thank, on Tuesday at 7 p.m. So basically what we want to do, this will be the last time that I will be preaching in this manner. And we're going to bring some other preachers on, uh, Pastor Rudy and some others, uh, to fill in. Uh, but at the beginning of the year, I'm going to start a new style of preaching. Not a style, but I'm going to go into some other things in the preaching that uh, that's, going to, that's going to take us probably through the beginning of the year. So what we're doing on this particular on this particular uh, uh, Sunday is we're dealing with the book of John. Uh, those of you on, on the Zoom, you know that the book of, you have your outline. I've done some uh, study of my own and a compilation of, of some different things, put some things together for you. I have it on the Zoom. We're, I'm going to try to follow it on Zoom today. I've never done this before, so give me space. And um, uh, we're going to deal with the Book of John. We're going to deal with the background. We're going to do the outline. And then I have a short message after that. Amen? Amen. So did you have some understanding as to why the Bible says what it does? We're trying to deal with biblical interpretation. Biblical interpretation is very important, but if you don't understand background, you don't understand what, how the book is laid out, we, we teach that you should read the whole Bible, the whole book of the Bible, not just a verse, not just a passage, but read the whole thing in context. And we stress context here, so... Stress, stress in context is important because if you take anything out of context, you can make it say anything you want. Uh, have you been taken out of context? I'm sure you have. Somebody says that you said something and you didn't say that at all. Amen. So let's deal with this, uh, dealing with the book of John. Father, we thank you, we praise you for all things in Jesus' name. Even now, God, we ask, Lord God, that you touch, heal, deliver, set free. Lord God, open us up, Lord God, to receive, Lord God, all that you have for us this day. That you, Lord God, may get the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dealing with the book of John, I'm reading from the lesson on the Zoom screen. The special emphasis of John is the deity of Jesus Christ. The special emphasis, I gotta say it again, the special emphasis of John is the deity of Jesus Christ. Emily, in, in her reading, she read the first uh, John 1-1 one, one through 14. And that's the first thing that you're gonna see is the deity of Jesus Christ, amen. And that's the reason I had her to read it because that's the most important thing that, G, that John talks about. It's, it's a common theme He's equal to the Father. He's expressed image of God all the way through John. Okay? The book of John consists chiefly of Jesus' discourses and conversations. Hmm? The book, this book gives things Jesus said rather than things he did. Now, now Mark deals with things he did more so than things he said. But John deals with things he he said rather than things he did. Among the four Gospels, the book of John stands in a class by itself. It is quite different in structure and style from the other three Gospels. The, the other three Gospels are similar. We call them the synoptic Gospels. The three are similar. And most, most Bible interpreters will say that Mark was written first and Luke and, and, and Matthew copied some of Mark. We don't know that to be true, but we do know that they are similar. Amen. Jesus is introduced in chapter 1 as the Word. 
or logos. In this way, Jesus is identified as the essence of God's revelation as he lived in this world. Mm -hmm. He is identified as the essence of God's revelation. God revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying. That's a fancy way of saying it. God revealed himself to mankind in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ left heaven, took on flesh to become born of a woman so that he could become man just like man is. What is man that thou art mindful of him came to mind? <laughs> Why would he do that? He loved us just that much. Hmm? Huh. In this way, Jesus identified as the essence of God's revelation as he lived in this world. The purpose of this book is to get to know Jesus as the Son of God and as your Savior in the presence of believing to trust him as Savior. That's a, that's some wordy, that's a wordy sentence, isn't it? <laughs> the purpose of this book is to get to know Jesus as the Son of God. Huh? God's Son. God in the flesh, and as Savior. And in the process, you should, be, you should learn to believe and to trust Him as your personal Savior. The purpose of the book. As the Lamb of God, Jesus provides salvation to whosoever believeth in Him. What did you say, Brother Paul? I said, as the Son of God. Jesus provides salvation for whosoever believes in him. In other words, there is nobody that, that, that Jesus will not save. Hmm? Whosoever will. It doesn't have anything to do with your social economic status, whether or not you're black or white or Hispanic or Asian. It doesn't that doesn't come into play. It doesn't come into play whether you're tall or short. It doesn't come into play whether you're skinny or fat. It doesn't come none of those things come into play. None of the things that 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 that, that man comes up with comes into play. This is a God thing. Whosoever will. Hmm? If you believe in him, then he will save you. The fact, the fact that Jesus is the Son of God is repeatedly indicated. Over and over in the book of John, Jesus is the Son of God. He's equal to God. He is my Father. All of these things, my Father and I are one, is repeated. It is repeated, repeated, repeated over and over again. If you've ever read the book of John, you know that John, he talks about uh, the, the, the fact that he and God are one all the time. And, 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 and with good reason. Now, at the same time, the humanity of Jesus is reflected in statements that he was weary. Hey, that's a, that, that's human. He was human. He was. He had real flesh. Hmm? He had, and 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 let me say this. He had flesh that was capable of sinning. What you say, Paul? He had the same flesh that me and you. He came as man. He didn't come as God. He was a hundred percent man. He was 100% God, but he was 100% man. And as 100% man filled with the Holy Spirit, that's how he operated. But he was what? He was the Son of God. He was the, the express image of God, the manifestation of God in the earth. Amen. He was weary. He was impatient, sorrowful, appreciative, and loving. The scriptures are given here in the book of John, 4th chapter, 6th chapter, 8th chapter, 12th chapter, 13th and 18th chapter. Jesus, record, John records Jesus as I am. He is, I am the bread of life in 635. Jesus is the light of the world in 812 and 95. Jesus is the door in 107. Jesus is the good shepherd in 10. 
that Jesus is the resurrection and the life in 14.6, and Jesus is the true vine in 15. I am, I am. Now, the, uh, uh, for biblical interpreters, because he says I am, that does not mean he's saying the same I am as what was used in the Old Testament. But we like to look at it that way. You know, because he said I am, and he and he, I am is a present tense. Who <laughs> in the, in, the, in the past, present, or future? He's present in all of those time frames at the same time. Oh Lord Jesus, help me! I'm trying. I'm trying to get background, and I feel like preaching. Some say that John is the deepest, most spiritual book in the whole Bible. I, I can't, I can't say it is or it's not, but it's good. <laughs> All of it's good. Only in John's gospel do we learn the length of Jesus' public ministry was three and a half years. No, none of the other synoptic gospels uh, gives that date, gives that time. Now, the date of John's gospel. Some say A.D. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the sum now. Some say. 90 A.D. Some say no later than 85 or 90 A.D. And sometime after 70 A.D. We, we, we don't know. But we know that 70 A.D. is referring to sometime after the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. They know it was after that. That's the only thing they can say. Alright. Now. I'm, I'm, I, I, I can't add to or take away from any of that. It's just some say. <laughs> Amen. The author, the author is clearly John, the son of Zebedee. John, I, the, the, this word is, is, is puzzling to me. Joannine authorship has never been questioned. John's, John being the author has never been questioned. It's, it's, it's pretty evident at the end of the gospel, the authorship is given to the disciple who bears witness of these things. John 21, 20 and verse 20 and verse 24. So we know that the author of the book is John. Now, about the author. John's father's name was what Zebedee. His brother James was also a disciple. His mother seems to be Salam. I don't. I'm saying Salami. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Salome, who seems to be the sister of Mary, Jesus' his mother. And if this is the case, then if this is the case, then that would make uh, Jesus. And John for his cousins. And even closer than that, if they lived in the same house. If they were lived in the same house under certain Jewish principles or, or customs, people, uh, kids that were, that were first cousins raised in the same house were considered brothers and sisters or siblings, however you want to say it. Amen. I, th I think this is good stuff. I don't know about you guys. This makes John and Jesus first cousins. John is recorded as the disciple that Jesus who loved. First cousins can be closer than brothers or sisters. Now that's my personal statement in there. <laughs> Jesus, first cousins can be closer than brothers or sisters. Because I got some first cousins that I was just really crazy about. And it, and it, and it had something to do with we were the same age. Hmm? So it seems as if John knew Jesus before the rest of the other disciples. Now, one thing else that, that you want to deal with here is that John, okay, well, it's in the lesson. I'll just, I'll just go on down to it. Jesus was a businessman. John was a businessman, excuse me. He had a fishing business with employees. And I'm not going to get into all of that. We all know that. He, he was a fisherman. He had a house in Jerusalem, and he knew the house priest. He was a disciple of John the Baptist and a cousin of John the Baptist. Huh? Because when, when John introduced him 
as the Lamb of God. They took note. And later on, they followed Jesus. They became fishers of men. He said, follow me. I will make you to become fishers of men. And they followed him. Mm -hmm. He was a disciple of John the Baptist and a cousin of John the Baptist. He was cousin. Remember when Mary met uh, uh, Elizabeth and the baby leaped in the womb? All of this is part of the background so that you will understand more about the book of John. Now when you read the book of John, you will have... You will have some thoughts in your head. Oh, wow, this is what happened, and this is why this happened. Hmm? I'm, I'm hoping and praying that all of you have read the book of John, or after this, you will read the book of John. Matter of fact, when I, when I taught new life classes at Revival Temple, that was one of the things I said to the new members. The new members, I, I, I always instructed them. The first book you should read is the book of John. The first book you should read is the book of John. Hmm? John was in Jesus' inner circle with Peter and James. Peter, James, and John and Peter were the leader. John and Peter were leaders in the church. They were the original leaders. And then Paul came along and he was one of the leaders. But Peter and uh, Peter and and John were going to the Jews, whereas Paul went to the Gentile. Hmm? John lived in Jerusalem and later in Ephesus. He wrote this gospel for and first, second, and third John from Ephesus. He was buried in Ephesus. Revelations was written while he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. Okay. Greek Isle. The last verse, the last verses in the gospel speaks volumes. Listen to me. The last verses in this gospel speaks volumes. What do you mean, Brother Paul? John 21, 25. And there are also many other things which Jesus did. If they should be all recorded one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Now, there are some people, and I, and, and 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 that's saying a whole lot. But I want to I want I want to go I want to go there for a minute. We don't have every every detail of everything. We have four gospels, and that's not enough. And what John is saying here, he will, he ministered the whole time he was up. The whole time he was up, he was ministering. He was always doing the Father's business. Always doing the Father's business. But one thing in for sure, these notes that you find in, 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 in some of the Bibles and some of the, and some of the uh, Bible uh, books about the Bible, books about the Bible, some of the tools that we use, often say that Jesus only did two miracles. Some say he did four miracles. Some say he did six. Some say he did ten. But I can count more than that on my hand just by just by thinking. So the because the Bible don't record it as a miracle don't mean it wasn't a, it wasn't a miracle. So these are the things we have to look at when we study. When we're studying, remember these books that we're reading about the Bible were written by man and subject to man. And a lot of times, a lot of people don't believe in miracles, so they'll say Jesus only did two miracles in his three and a half years. But uh, here, we find that, that John is saying there are other things that Jesus did if they sh uh, should all be recorded that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written, hmm? that should be written about Jesus' ministry. We just don't know, and we should be reflecting that in our own personal lives. Oh, John 14, 12 comes to mind. Outline. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to run through the outline chapter by chapter. One-liners, and we're giving some one-liners for each chapter, and basically just to give you an overview 
of what's contained in the book of John. And basically, we're, we're going to start with one. And the, and the first and the first chapter, John, is heavy. If, 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 if you've never written it, uh, read it, then you really need to read this one. John begins his gospel by talking about the deity, the divine status of, of the or supreme being of Jesus the Christ. Then describes the ministry of John the Baptist. Jesus is baptized and calls his first disciples. All of this is contained in the first chapter. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. And it goes on and on and on and on. Y'all know it. Y'all should know it. And here we go. Here we go again. Chapter 2. Jesus performs his first miracle and drives the merchants and money changers out of the temple. When the Jew Jewish leaders challenge his authority, Jesus says he will restore the, de the, the destroyed temple, his body that is, in three days. And, 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 and that was a little confusion there for the Jewish leaders. They didn't understand that. But here we go. Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Jesus meets with Nicodemus and tells him in order to be saved, all people must be what? Born again. All people must be what? Born again. John the Baptist tells his disciples that Jesus is the Messiah. Jewish leaders hear that Jesus was baptizing more people than John. And that's important because that's the reason he left Judea going back to to, to Nazareth is because of that. And I put that in there on my own. That's not part of my, 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 my outline. I, I added that. Now, the Jewish leaders hear that Jesus was baptizing more people than John. So Jesus found out that what was going on. So Jesus said, let's go, fellas. Let's go back. Let's go back home. And, and then on the way, Chapter 4, we find that Jesus meets the woman at the well in Samaria. He's left Judea, and he's going back to, 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 to Galilee. Now, here we go. Jesus meets a woman in chapter 4 at the well and offers her living water. He reveals that, that, that God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship, must worship him in spirit and truth. Then we find that many Samaritans uh, in the woman's village believes on Jesus. He goes to Samaria and preaches and teaches there for a couple of days. He tells his disciples that he has meat to meat to eat that they don't know nothing. They were saying, eat Jesus, eat, eat, eat. He said, no, I got something to eat. He, was, he said, I'm living off doing the will of my father. Oh, that, I added that. Because I didn't want to leave it out. It's just too important. He performs miracles on the son of a government official who lives in Capernaum. Hmm? After he don't walk 75 miles, <laughs> he gets home. And then this guy comes up to him talking about, come, my son is dying. If you don't, if you don't come here, my son goes die. Jesus said, go, your son lives. Hmm? performs a miracle. The man was in the process of dying. It's, it's recorded in scripture as a miracle. Chapter 5. Jesus heals the lame man at the pool of Bethesda. Responding to harassment by the Jewish leaders, Jesus affirms that he is the divine son of God. He, re, he just comes out and says, hey, I am the son of God. Hello, you know what that guy did done. They got him in trouble. Chapter 6. Jesus feeds the 5,000 and walks on water. <laughs> I see what John is talking about now. Do you understand what John you, you, you see how this is you see how this is unfolding? Mm, the, 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 he feeds 5,000 and walks on water. You know, and, and John is talking this stuff. Listen to me. This is, this is all in John's gospel. He's telling us that he fed 5,000 people with a couple of fish and some bread. And now, and then he walks on water. Hello? That, that, that's, that was a normal, a normal day for him. <laughs> Hello? That was a normal day for him. What does your normal day look like? Hello? He 
He teaches that he is the bread from heaven and that all who wish to have eternal life must eat his flesh and drink his blood. And many of the 70, because he, you know, he had that group of 12, he had an inner following of three, but he also had the 70. Of those 70, some turned away from him because he started talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. They said, oh, no, I, 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 I was with you up to that point. Many of his followers, unable to accept this difficult symbolism, desert Jesus. They, they went all the way. I can't do it. can't do it. And he turns to his, his 12 disciples and he said, will you go also? And Peter stood up and said, hey, where will we go? Huh? You have the words of eternal life. <laughs> oh, oh it's John's just a good book. I, I, I could take off preaching right here anywhere. I could take off preaching this any any time or any place. This chapter, chapter 7, can be summarized by two words. They didn't believe him <laughs> and division. Disbelief and division. And, and that's what he was going through. He was talking this stuff about who he was and, and all this stuff, eating my bread and drinking. And people said, well, wait a minute, now, what's going on here? Everything that he did became, people start, what, what? questioning him. Hmm? So there was division. Chapter 8. Jesus defends a woman caught in adultery by reminding her accusers that they too were sinners. Hmm? Y'all know the story. Jesus says that he is the eternal light of the world and existed before Abraham was even born. Now you know that caused problems, right? He said, before, before Abraham was, I am. Hmm? In, in chapter 9, Jesus heals a blind, a man born blind, and that causes some problems. And I want you to know that chapter 9 is just the beginning of the story. Chapter 9 and chapter 10 actually go hand in hand. So when you, if you open up your Bible and you're just going to read one chapter, don't read just chapter 10 because you won't understand it. You have to read chapter 9 before you read chapter 10. Chapter 10 says, Jesus compares his followers to sheep and says that he is the good shepherd. He also says that he is the son of God and that his father and he are one. He got in trouble again with the, with the religious leaders of the day. Chapter 11, Jesus raises his friend Lazarus from the dead. Huh? And they plot to kill Jesus. Now, What's not said right here, but it is said later on, is that not only were they going to kill Jesus, but they were going to kill Lazarus. <laughs> See, Lazarus already done died one time. And because of the miracle that was performed on him, they wanted to erase him again. They wanted to erase Jesus, and they wanted to erase the, the, the person that he raised from the dead, Lazarus. My, my, my. Chapter 12. Mary anoints Jesus' feet with an expensive bottle of perfume, and, and Jesus had to come to her defense because his own disciples were trying to put her, uh, 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 mess around, mess with her, and stop her from doing what Scripture had already prophesied that she would do. And Jesus defends her action when Judas condemns her. Jesus fulfills prophecy by riding triumphantly into Jerusalem. He predicts his death. Hmm? Chapter 12. Chapter 13. Jesus washes his disciples' feet and predicts both Judas' betrayal and Peter's denial. Chapter 14. This is a, 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 some good teaching, Jesus speaking to his disciples, teaching his disciples. He's continuously teaching in chapter 15. He speaks to his disciples about bearing fruit, about loving, about suffering, and about witnessing. Hmm? Chapter 16, 
he records three rounds of conversations between Jesus and his disciples. Book of John is exciting. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get on board with this. Jesus prays for his disciples in chapter 17 and for all who believe in him. We're gonna deal with this after I finish this part right here. Alright? Chapter 17. The real, I call that the real Lord's Prayer. <laughs> the real Lord's Prayer. Chapter 18. Jesus is betrayed by Judas into the hands of a battalion of Roman soldiers and temple guards. The high priest questions Jesus and Peter denies Jesus as the Savior had already predicted. And he stands trial with Pilate. Chapter 19, Jesus, Pilate gives in to the crowd and sentences Jesus to death. Jesus dies on the cross, saving all the world from, from sin. Joseph of, of Arthemea asks Pilate for the permission to bury Jesus' body and place it in a new, previously unused tomb. It was a borrowed tomb. He didn't need it for about three days. <laughs> Woo! Somebody ought to say amen. He said, oh, I'm not going to be you. I'm not going to keep this. You can have it back. I'm just borrowing this. Hello, chapter 20. Jesus is raised from the grave. Hallelujah. He raised from the grave. Amen. And defeating the power of death for all time and appears to Mary Magdalene and the disciples except for Thomas. Now, when Thomas doubts the truth of, of the resurrection, Jesus appears to him. Amen. He, he left no stone unturned. Now, the resurrected Christ in chapter 21 meets with his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. Amen. You said, well, Brother Paul, you ran through that quite fast. I did. I did. Because if I took my time and, and, and commented on every one of those chapters, we'd be here all day. And y'all would start clicking and, 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 and swiping. <laughs> I know you. Yes. The last verse in this gospel, I said this before, but I'm going to say it again. I put it in here twice for a reason. The last verse in this gospel speaks volumes, John 21, 25. And there are also many other things which Jesus did. If they should all be recorded one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written or would be written about him. Amen. Amen. And amen. Now, that ends. That's the end. Hello. That's the end of, hello, my, my, uh, my Savior Connect has just ended. My battery died. The, that ends the, the background and the outline of the book of John. Now, this is the last time I will be doing this on Sunday morning or Sunday service. So, uh, we're ending on a good note. We're ending on a very good note. We're ending on the book of John. I may, at some point, give you an outline on, on something that that is critical. Uh, but, I don't plan on doing this forever. But because we're in Bible study and we're dealing with we're dealing with Bible interpretation, then that's why I'm doing this. So that it will help you to understand the Bible. So if you get the background, you have an outline, then when you read that book, that book becomes so much more important, so much more valuable to you. Alright? Alright. Now, let me see. Where is my other Bible? Where is my raggedy Bible? Oh, there it is. I don't want to preach this from the Amplified. I want to get... I want to get right into this. The book of John, the 17th chapter, the real Lord's Prayer. Amen. The real Lord's Prayer. What did you say, Brother Paul? I said the real Lord's Prayer. John 17, 
if you look, if you look at 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 at, at the things that's happened a little prior, that's prior to seventeen in verse in chapter sixteen. Jesus is talking to his disciples in plain language. And they acknowledge, Jesus, you're not even talking to us like you did before. You're talking to us in regular language. You're not doing parables and symbolisms and all, and all of this hyperbole. and all. That. You're not doing any of those things anymore. You're talking plainly to us. And Jesus said that he's getting ready again to leave the world and go to the Father. Hmm? And he tells them about it, that they're getting ready to scatter and leave him and abandon him. Uh, but in, thir in, in 1633, Jesus says this. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Ain't that, ain't that good news that he's overcome the world? And so have you if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Everyone that believes that Jesus is the Son of God in John 1, in 1 John, uh, everyone that believes that John, Jesus is the Son of God has overcome the world and will overcome continuously. It's a continuous thing. You have to look at it. You have to study that to see that. All right. Here we go. In John 17, Jesus, the, the Lord's real prayer, the Lord's real prayer. I'm not going to deal with all of it. I, it's a couple of places I'm going to read some of it to you, and then I'm going to give, give, give it over to you. I'm very brief. These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven, saying, Father, the hour is come. Jesus is praying to the Father. Hmm? The real Lord's Prayer. Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may be may glorify thee. Listen to what he's saying. Glorify me, that I can glorify you. Hmm? He's saying this right before he was arrested and, and crucified. As thou hast given me power over all flesh, that he should that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. What? That this is eternal. This is life eternal. Eternal life. Life eternal. That they may know God and the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life, that you get to know Jesus, the Christ. And then he says, I have glorified thee on the earth. He's, he's just talking to God. He's talking to his Father, just like we talk to him. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou, thou gavest me to do. Now, that's an that's a important thing there. I can't let that go. I have finished the work which thou gave me to do. We all have a work to do. And we have to finish our work. So we need to get busy doing what thus says the Lord. And now, O oh Father, glorify me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now that's... Whoo, he says... Glorify me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now, in John 1, 1, we saw that. Mm -hmm. The glory that, that Jesus had before the world was. Before the world was. Mm -hmm. Before there was a world, Jesus was was with the Father. See, you you got a whole lot of Bible teachers that teach that that, that Jesus only started being Jesus when 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 he came into the earth when he was born into the earth realm. But he was with the he was with the Father 
where there has never been a time when there wasn't no Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There was always the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They are one. Now, let me make that perfectly clear. Uh, verse 6, I'm sorry. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou hast gave thou gave them me, and they have kept thy word. Know they now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are from you or of thee. I have given unto them the words which thou gave me, and they have received them. I have known surely that I came out of thee, and they gave, they have believed that thou didst send me. Hmm? And we have also. Not only did he pray for the disciples, but guess what? He's going to pray for us too. For I have given unto them thy words which thou gave me, and they have received the word, and have known surely that I came out of thee, and, I, and have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but I pray for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. They are yours. And all are my, and all mine are thine. Mm -hmm. Mine all mine are yours. And yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. And I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I have come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we as we are. While I was with thee in the world, I kept while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, those that thou hast given me, and I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Hmm? He said, I've lost nothing except for the son of perdition, and that was to fulfill the scripture. And, uh, and he, he's not going to lose you either. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them that, your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as not I am not of the world. And you are not of the world. Hmm? I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from the evil. See, Je Jesus prayed for us. If he hadn't have prayed this, then we'd be in trouble. Huh? <laughs> we, we might be in, in trouble. Huh? Don't take them out of the world. You know, you know, you know. <laughs> That's the question that we have to be 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 be, be really mindful of. Hmm? Well, once I got saved, why come Jesus just didn't take me on home? Huh? Now, that I, now you know, but 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 He also prayed that He would keep us from the evil that's in the world. He He's not He don't want to take you home. He He wants you to He wants to use you. Who you me? Yes, you. He wants to use you. Uh, they are not of the world, even as not, I'm not I am not. A, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the, through the truth. Listen to this, and I'm almost through. Neither I pray for these alone, but for them also who shall believe on me through their word. Huh? He's talking about, I'm praying. He's praying to the Father. And he's praying, he's, I'm praying not only for the disciples, but for everyone that believes what the disciples preached and what's been recorded here. So he's talking about us. I'm praying for them too, that they may believe. Hmm? John's gospel is about believing that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Hmm? And he's offering eternal life. 
you see, after this, Jesus is arrested. He's tried illegally. He's tried and he's put on the cross. He, he sheds his blood for us on the cross. And then, guess what? He's raised from the dead. You say, what? Yes, he's raised from the dead. The Bible records all of this. But in this prayer, God prays for the, himself. He prays for the disciples. And he prays for those that will believe on the disciples' word. The disciples wrote the New Testament. Hello. We believe because of his word. What are you trying to say, Brother Paul? John's gospel is a great gospel, but it's all about Jesus Christ being God in the flesh. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came that we might have eternal life. Do, have, do you have eternal life today? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you asked him to come into your heart and save your soul? Can you believe that Jesus Christ loved you enough that he would die on the cross for you? Let's go back a little further. Do you believe that God loves you so much that he came down himself to show you the way? He came down himself to die on the cross in your place. He loved you so much that he... He didn't leave it up to man. He did it. Some things you just have to do yourself. And that's what he did. He came down. He manifested himself to the world. Jesus is the only visible representation of God there is. God in the flesh. He loves you just that much that he would die on the cross in your place. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He loves you. Over and over again, I say the same thing. He loves you just that much that he would die on the cross, shed his blood to wash away all the sins of the world. All the sins of the world have been washed away. But you have to repent and acknowledge that, that Jesus Christ died on the cross in your place to receive it. You have to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior to receive this. Turn from your wicked ways. Ask Jesus to forgive you of all your sins. Ask him to come into your heart and save your soul. Hmm? Believe that Jesus Christ's blood on the cross washed away all of your sins. And that in, in being raised from the dead, he justified you just as if you never sinned. Hmm? You were declared not guilty. But it's only if you ask him to come into your heart and to save your soul. You have to ask him. You have to ask him to come into your heart and to save your soul. Amen and amen.